Let's just stand to our feet this morning to get ready to worship the Lord on this Easter Resurrection Sunday. Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can we just put our hands together and just welcome Him in His presence in the house this morning? Amen. How many of you have seen the movie, God's Not Dead? Well, I'm here to tell you He's not dead. We serve a risen Savior. I don't care who tries to look at it like however they try to look at it. He's alive, and He's well, and He's living in me. Amen. How many of you would attest to that this morning, that God is living in you? The same power the Bible says, your Bible says, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, amen, is active in you. Man, that's something to think about, isn't it? The same power that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of us. We have resurrection power this morning, thanks to Jesus. Amen. I'm glad he went down, but I'm glad he got up. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we just welcome you in this house this morning. Come on. Why don't you do that? Why don't you just welcome him in the house this morning? It's all about worship. This is between you and God. Father, we just worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. Come on, church. Let's just focus in on him right now. That's what it's all about. Really, this is what life's all about. It's all about Jesus. And we just praise you, Jesus, and we worship you, and we magnify you today, Lord. We lift you up in this house, and we give you praise. Can you just put your hands together again? Come on, church. Come on, praise him. Oh, we worship you, Lord, yeah, for salvation's in this place. You're the name by which we're saved, Jesus. Oh, let your name be lifted high As our thankful hearts now cry Jesus, oh For salvation's in this place You're the name by which we're saved Jesus, oh, let your name be lifted high As our thankful hearts now cry Jesus, oh, for salvation's in this place. You're the name by which we're saved. Jesus, oh, let your name be lifted high as our thankful hearts now cry. Jesus, oh, Jesus. The King is coming in We prepare the way Oh, we lift up We lift up a shout To shake the sky We lift it up Be glorified The King is coming in The King is coming in Oh, we say Lift up your head You ancient gates We lift it up You ancient doors The King is coming in we lift up a shout to shake the skies. We lift it up, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. Oh, we will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout. Up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Oh, for salvation's in this place. You're the name by which we're saved, Jesus. Oh, let your name be lifted high as our thankful hearts now cry. Jesus, Jesus, lift up your head, you ancient gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, the King is coming in, the King is coming in, oh we lift, we lift up a shout to shake the sky, be lifted up, be glorified, the King is coming in. Your head, lift up 
your head. You ancient gates, he lifts it up. You ancient doors, the king is coming in. Oh, the king, the king is coming in. Oh, we lift up a shout to shake the sky. He lifts it up, be glorified. The king is coming in. The king is coming in. King is coming in. Oh, say, oh, lift up your head, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We lift up the shout to shake the sky. Be lifted up, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the sky. We lift it up, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. Say the King, the King is coming in. The King is coming in. Oh, the King is coming in. The King is coming in.
shine, Jesus, you shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Shine, Jesus, you shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Shine, Jesus, you shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Hey, shine, shine, Jesus, you shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Save my 
final breath he gave One final breath he gave As heaven looks away The Son of God was made in darkness A battle in the grave The war on death was made The power of hell for Hold oh, the ground begin to shake All the storm was rolled away His perfect love could not be
in his death. Amen. Unless a seed dies, it's not going to produce anything. Amen. So he wants us to live today by participating in his death. How many of you are thankful for his death and his resurrection this morning? I want to tell you, I'm thankful for that, but that's not where it stops. The next rumbling we're going to hear is going to be the rapture of the church. How many of you are ready this morning for the rapture? of the church. The Bible says there's going to be signs in the heavens. I believe God's coming back for His church. Church, are you ready? Amen. God's not dead. Look at your neighbor and say, God's not dead. He's alive. Say, He's living in me. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us as believers. Amen. That's why I can smile this morning. This is something that as believers we celebrate every day. His resurrection. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and give Him praise in the house of God. Come on everybody. Let's give Him praise this morning. God, You're worthy. You're alive. We praise You. We worship You. He is alive. Thank You, Lord. He is alive. Some of you just need to let that sink in this morning. Amen. Some of you, God brought you by here this morning and just to tell you it's time to die. It's time to die. Amen. We're to die daily. And then we live. Amen. God resurrects us. Father, we just give you praise and glory in your house this morning. Praise you, Father. Why don't you just put your hands together one more time as you're being seated. Just give him praise in the house of God. Lord, we just praise you. Thank you, worship team. Children, just stay seated. We've got a special um, 
song here in a few minutes. We want you to be a part of this, and then we'll formally dismiss for Children's Church. We do have a nursery directly behind me. If you go down this hallway, it'll take you straight to the nursery. Again, Pastor will be dismissing for Children's Church momentarily. If you're here for the first time this morning, if you're at sunrise for the first time this morning, would you raise your hand? If you're here for the first time, can we give our visitors a a hand for being here this morning? Please make sure on the end, um, Devin, will you hold up this paper and this clipboard? Hold it up and just wave it. Please make sure on the end of every pew is a clipboard and a paper and a pen. If you've not signed that yet, please make sure that everyone signs that, that you're here. Even if you put your address and your phone number down before, at least sign it so that we know that you're here. If we don't have a record um, of your address and your phone number, please put that down there as well so that we can contact you. Just to let you know that we were glad that you worshiped with us and to see if there's any way that we can serve you. Amen. That's what the body of Christ is called to do. When Jesus came, he said, I've just come to serve. God's called us to be servants. So we want, if there's any way we can help you, um, just let us know. Again, it's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. I would that you all come back next week, next Sunday morning. We do this every week, don't we, Pastor? Same time, same place, and the same Spirit of God shows up. Amen. And you never know what he's going to do. So you don't want to miss a single Sunday. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves, even more so as you see the day approach. Amen? And we do that, and we celebrate Jesus, and we say, God, you're first in our lives, and we worship you, and we praise you, and we give you honor. Amen? Praise the Lord again. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. You look great. Turn around at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look great. Didn't the worship team do a wonderful job in worship this morning and carrying us into the presence of God? Come on, let's give our worship team a hand this morning. Amen. Appreciate Brad, bro, and his wife and family being here and playing bass this morning and helping us out. It's always good to have them in the house of God with us this morning. Pastor Randy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Again, children, Pastor Randy will be dismissing you to Children's Church. They've got a special song that we want you to hear and be a part of, and then we'll officially dismiss you to the foyer, and then we'll take you to Children's Church, and we might just hunt eggs before the day's over. Is that okay if we hunt some eggs? So praise the Lord. Can we give Pastor Randy a hand this morning as he's coming? Praise you, Lord. Praise looks good on you. Scripture declares that you ought to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. How many's got on the garment of praise? The garment of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, you you just uh, you stepped into the right place at the right time at the right moment into the presence of the Lord. To receive the good things of God today. Today is all about Him. It's all about Jesus. We've gathered in His name to lift Him up. To exalt Him. Because He has made the ultimate sacrifice. He has paid the supreme penalty. And because of it, God has deemed him worthy. Worthy to receive all blessing, all glory, all honor, and all praise. There is no flesh that need even think about glory in the sight of God. Because your righteousness and my righteousness, God considers filthy. He said it's like a, it's like a tarnished, blemished rag. But God heaped on Jesus... All of our condemnation, 
He took it. See, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he looked in that cup, you know what was in there? Your sin and my sin. That's why he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. If it could be your will, I don't want to drink this cup because he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could be free. Oh my God, I don't know about you this morning. I'm just really messed up today. I'm messed up. And the reason is because he did it for you. And he did it for me. You see, for me, Easter's personal. Easter's very personal. Because he did it. He made the divine connection so that you and I could go free. Uh I, I messed up. I want to laugh and cry at the same time. I, I, I want to jump for joy and at the same time I want to fall on my face and fall on my knees and just worship Him because He's worthy to receive it all. It's all about Him because He made it all about you. He came down to your level when you couldn't get up to His. Amen. Hallelujah. Lest I get too excited here today, I, I want to be sensitive to flow in the Holy Ghost, but I'm, I'm sensing with a crowd like this, you can get unrest, un, uh, you can get into a position of unrest real fast. So the Holy Spirit is prompting me to kind of move on so that, but I don't want to go at warp speed, so I leave some of you in the dust. Hang with me this morning. We'll get the kids out and move everything along as the Holy Spirit would have us to flow. Would you, is everybody willing to look over at your neighbor and say, go with the flow? Just go with the flow. That's what we're here to do today. Go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. He knows what he's doing. and He'll help us get it all together and get everything orchestrated properly. Let's uh, real quickly, um, ushers are prepared to, to wait on you this morning and Put your guest cards in there and the tithes and offerings. And we'll just worship the Lord this morning together. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. While they're doing, while we're receiving the offering this morning, uh, yeah, Aubrey, since you're, uh, since you're doing that, let's just uh, under, kind of just uh, do that over the blood of Jesus. What a sacrifice. All that, you know. We'll just kind of flow with that. The ensemble's coming to sing this morning. Sing some songs. And uh, if the elders will adjust the BTUs in here, we're getting a little, seeing people starting to do this. Y'all are all getting together. Okay. Some of you aren't used to this many people being together in the same building. And y'all need to shut your circulation down. So you're not giving off so many BTUs. We're building up heat in the building. Bless the Lord. Amen. I'm going to have you just remain seated this morning because we'll be up and down and up and down. We'll just worship the Lord together. What we do here, though, is we just sanctify what we're going to give. This is time for tithes and offerings. And the Lord just, we're discovering that he's blessing and honoring our faithfulness to give. Um, we're, not, we're not giving to get. We give to be blessed. Blessing is different than getting. Okay? Blessing and, and favor are something distributed by the Holy Spirit as an act of your obedience. The Holy Spirit responds to your obedience. Okay? Okay? When you obey what God directs you to do and speaks to your heart to do, then the Holy Spirit, then He begins to open the windows of heaven over you, over your house, over your family. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to be able to walk in divine health? Isn't that good? Isn't it wonderful that the Lord supplies all your needs? 
so that when you honor him, there's enough left over at the end of the month. You can just continue to bless him because he takes care of that. He's your supply. Let's just lift our tithes and offerings up before the Lord. Father, we thank you today for newness of life. We thank you that light has come into the world and dispelled the darkness. And because of it, we are free. If the Son of God has set us free, then we are indeed free. And we walk in that freedom today and we declare and proclaim unashamedly that we have liberty in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that today because that denotes that we have provision. Our Father has provided everything that we have need of according to His riches and glory by Jesus Christ. And so I praise you. I give you glory and honor for you indeed are worthy to receive it all. And so we bless your name as your people today. Thankful for the provision from on high. For the wisdom that is from above. And we give you glory and praise. In the strong name of the risen Son of the living God. Let all God's church say praise the Lord. Worship Him. And all the blood of Jesus washes me.
Your name is light, our hope in darkness. Your name is strong to save the day. Your name is great, our mighty fortress. When all else crumbles, you remain. Hallelujah to the one who's faithful. Goes on and on. This is our everlasting song. Glory to your name, our God and our Savior. Worthy of praise, all the praise, all the praise. Forever you reign, Almighty Redeemer. We are saved.
Mark. many Easter Sundays I get to sing a song you know, yeah, yeah. This is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Jesus says, yeah, come on. Do this. All right. Giants. Rise. Resurrection Sunday. Rise and go for it. They've got some wonderful surprises ready for you. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Look at them coming from the east, west, north, south their Easter best, running. I wish I could get some adults to run in church. Kids, they don't think anything about it. You and I, we get all, yeah. Listen closely. Today, on 24th, I am declaring and proclaiming that every Sunday, from now until the rapture of the church, is Hallelujah! It's Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Now, that ought to be incentive enough. Good news is that you take this with you. Coming to this place doesn't make you feel like you come here because of this word. It's all glory and honor to this place. Bless the Lord. Going somewhere this week. It's different than where I normally go. So I'm going to require you to focus and stay with me. Already, already, Already. We come to a service on and while we can identify a lot of times with horrific
roller coaster. Storyline looks Look at the comments. I'm here to tell you that there have been those who tried to make it work. The enemy has tried to make it work. Backed up by historical truth. Backed up by biblical truth. It is a fact. It is a denial. Jesus Christ made the ultimate Christ. Made the ultimate sacrifice. Today, he is the risen Lord of glory, seated at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession on our behalf. The fact of the matter, when we come to moments like this, though, we don't like to talk about death. You absolutely have to fall back on euphemisms, if you will. We use things like that person is no longer with us. They have passed on. They passed away. They didn't make it. We want to ignore it entirely. We don't want to engage the inevitability of death as a culture. We read novels about it. We watch movies about it. We try to make sense of it. On our own, we are sociologically and physiologically ill-equipped to deal with the reality of our departure from this life. I'm convinced that the, the field of cosmetology and plastic surgery are industries that... Uh, have become multi-billion dollar industries. Why? Because of our worship of beauty. We fear aging as the harbinger of death. Oh, you're getting old. I love it when people that I haven't seen in a while say, you know, you've not aged a bit. Do you love it when they say that? To you? You've not aged a bit. You look the same as you did when you're you were 16. I said, you know, I said, it's like my dad's pastor used to say to us. I remember him saying as a little boy, he'd say, you know, that's sweet air, but I like it. I like it. <laughs> Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, like all of creation, we struggle to be liberated from the bondage of decay. You struggle to be liberated from the bondage of decay. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin and death? Proverbs 13, verse 1 and 2, or verse 12, I'm sorry. It says this. It jumped off the page at me as I was researching for today. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Hallelujah. A desire fulfilled is a tree of life. In Acts chapter 2, Peter recalls a promise that God made to David to one day raise up one of his offspring to be king of an everlasting kingdom. Can I tell you today that you are part of an everlasting kingdom? David never realized the promise, but he told about it. David was not merely a psalmist, David was a prophet. In Acts chapter 2, verse 30, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ. Listen to what he says. 
being, however, a prophet and knowing that God had sealed him with an oath that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. Verse 31, he says, he foreseeing this, he was this, he spoke by foreknowledge of the resurrection of the Christ that he was not deserted in death. Is anybody getting a hold of this? Hello. What I just said to you. We don't want to deal with this stuff. We, we don't, want, don't want to deal with the reality. Everybody's putting it off. Hello. Even if the funeral home calls you and says, uh, we're running a special this month on, on, on funerals and burial plots. I don't want to talk to you. I, I, I've got a funeral director that calls me every month. And he says, you know, you need to hold a funeral seminar in your church. And I tell him every time, I, it just won't go over real big. I'm not going to get a whole lot of takers. Because folks want to defer what is the ultimate appointment and the ultimate reality that we are all going to face it. But here's the good news. David is prophesying and Peter resounds it. You will not be deserted in death and you will not be left in Hades, the state of departed spirits, nor did his body know decay nor see destruction. Hallelujah. Even Luke 24, 44. Then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which is written concerning me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Whoa, I didn't know that was there. And the Psalms must be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I flipped over to Psalms chapter 22, verse and chapter 23 and chapter 24, and I found out that those are the shepherd Psalms. Those are the Psalms that talk about specific circumstances that are linked to the crucifixion, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension and the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 22 is known as the Psalm of the Cross. The Psalm of the Cross is birthed out of specific circumstances. It depicts the horrific Good Friday scene where the sufferer was first of all forsaken by God. My God, my God, why? Have you forsaken me? It wasn't that God was forsaking His Son. It was that He could no longer look upon the sin that was laid upon Him. For He took upon the sin of us all. He was abused verbally by men. He was ridiculed by men for His trust and belief in God. He was also surrounded by His enemies. He was weakened physically. He was thirsty he was pierced in his hands and his feet, yet not a bone was broken in his body. He was stared at and howled at and ridiculed by the people. He was humiliated as lots were cast for his clothing. He was afflicted, yet prayers were answered. Not only does this psalm accurately depict the agonizing death of the suffering Jesus, but it also shows the humility of the sufferer, who in the midst of anguish praises and glorifies God. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I wonder if I'm talking to the right group this morning, that when adversity comes your way, when struggle and suffering and difficulty and sacrifice comes your way, do you begin to curse God and assign blame and look for an excuse and a way out? Or do you begin to lift up holy hands do you begin to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and lift up your voice unto God? You see, the writer of Hebrews connects the suffering psalmist to Jesus who was crowned with glory and honor. And because of that suffering death, so that the grace of God might be tasted for everyone. He took on the sin. He took on the sting of death so that He could release the grace of God. In Jesus Christ. Notice what he says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. He says, Jesus, who is, the, is subject to no one thing, modeled perfect humility by subjecting himself to suffering. 
And in his suffering, he sang praises to God. Hallelujah. But we are able to see Jesus, who was ranked lower or a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor, because of his having suffered death, in order that by grace, the unmerited favor of God to we sinners, he might experience death for every individual person. Are you getting this this morning? He did it for you. For it was an act worthy of God and fitting to the divine nature that he whose sake and by whom all things have their existence in bringing many sons into glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect. Or in other words, should bring to maturity the human experience necessary to be perfectly equipped for his high office as high priest. How did he become high priest? How was he highly exalted and given a name that was above every name? That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue confess. He's Lord to the glory of God the Father. Notice what he says here. This last verse. He did it by suffering. He did it by suffering. For he says, I will declare you, your, your, the Father's name, to my brethren in the midst of the worshiping congregation. I will sing hymns of praise to you. So Psalm 22 says, He took the full brunt. He bore it all. The curse of sin, everything that you and I have ever faced or ever will face, He took your place. Galatians 3.13 says that He did it in order to purchase our freedom. He purchased your freedom. I just wonder if anybody's ever... Unless you've been a slave, unless you know what it means to be a slave, and whether you know it or not, you and I were slaves to sin before Jesus. You had no choice. You had no freedom. You had no liberty. Whatever sin said do, that's what you do. That's what you did. Whatever sin says do, that's what you become a participant in. Why? Because that's your nature to do that. I'm not here to deliver condemnation to anybody. All I'm saying to you is that that is the taskmaster that sin has become to the human family. It is your master. The Scripture declares, Don't you understand? Whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, he is you are. And the reality this morning is this. You're going to serve somebody. You're either going to serve the master of sin or you're going to serve the master of life. You're either going to serve the master of death or you're going to serve the master of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what redemption means. That's what salvation means. It just simply means to change masters. You just change masters. But some of you are kind of weighed in the balance and found wanting this morning. You're already but not yet. You're kind of like Paul was when he stood in Agrippa's court and explained the plan of salvation to Agrippa. And Agrippa replied to him in the halls of education and wisdom, Paul, almost you've persuaded me to be a Christian. Already, but not yet. I, I, I would follow Christ, but, but not yet. I've got other things to do. I, I, I understand what you're saying to me this morning. I, I understand the, the gravity of it. But I'm not quite ready to receive Jesus Christ. Well, you forfeit the blessing. Then. You, you forfeit the promise. You see, the blessing promised to Abraham has now come upon the Gentiles. Then, then most of y'all missed that. The, the, the blessing that was promised to Abraham, has, you see, he said, this will be to your children and to your children's children and to, you, and, and to as many as are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. The, the promise 
the promise of liberty, the promise of freedom, the, the promise of eternal life that was made to Abraham has now... You see, the, the Jews didn't want it. The Jews didn't receive him. They rejected him. Oh my God. Oh my God. He came into his own, but his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power. To them gave he authority. Sin no longer has dominion over you. Sin no longer can hold you in captivity. Sin can no longer hold you bound in bondage again. For the Son, by His power and authority, has set you free. And if the Son has made you free, then you are free indeed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. He promised it and made good on it by the authority of the Holy Spirit. You see, you and I should have been forsaken. That's why I cried from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken. So that you wouldn't be forsaken. He was condemned. So you would not be condemned. He was troubled and suffered, was vexed in his spirit so that you and I could experience peace. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2.17 declares, He came and preached glad tidings of peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near. He concludes the psalm with the hope that righteousness will be given to a people Yet unborn. My God. The hope of righteousness will be given to a people. Yet unborn. Jesus Christ. The only righteous one. Took on our unrighteousness. So that we might become. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. For our sake. He made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin so that in and through Him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God. What we ought to be. That's what you're original. All He's trying to do is return you to the state that He created Adam. even he's trying to replace it with a whole new nature. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> as, as, as one poet said, he said, there, there is one thing for sure, the only cure is a manicure. Some of you will get that on the way home. And I'm not talking about the fingernails. I'm talking about a regeneration of the soul. Of the spirit. So that you could become approved and accepted by God in right relationship with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. You don't have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize with with your shared feelings, with our weaknesses, and with our infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation. See, that's what we're struggling with, is the temptation. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Hallelujah. I, I, would, I wouldn't want to follow a God that... that that still had a problem with sin. Uh, I'm glad he took care of the sin problem, aren't you? Uh, the, the, he doesn't have a problem. See, he openly put sin to an open shame and said, because of what I've accomplished, 
you can do it also. You, you can do this. I, I've made it available to you, so yet without sinning, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help, if you will. And well-timed help coming just when we need it. It got here just on time. Just when we need it. You, you see, here's the deal. So, some of you, if you think, well, uh, I'm, uh, it's already, but not yet. I, 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 would, I would serve the Lord, but, but not yet. Guess what? He has time on His side. You don't. Can I give you that reality this morning? You're running out of time. Because when you depart this life, unless you have one who will safely help you cross over into the next life, you're on your own. And when you run out of time, you're stepping over into eternity. And where will you spend eternity? Where's eternity going to be for you? For, for those of you who do not have the gift of eternal life, right here and right now, may I tell you, this is the only heaven you will ever know. Right here, right now. This is the only heaven you will ever know. Because when you cross over into the next life, without God, without Jesus, without eternal life, you're crossing over into eternal damnation, eternal punishment. Hello. See, uh, reality's there. And, and, and you know what part of the torture will be? Is that for those who reject Jesus, you'll remember today the longest day you spend in eternity. You'll remember today that you had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. And you said, already, but not yet. Already, but not yet. I've got too much else to do. I've got too much life to live. I, I've got religion. I'm not talking to you about religion this morning. I'm talking to you about a relationship of intimate proportion. The most exciting Vibrant, free life anybody could ever experience. Hallelujah. Anybody could ever experience. Free from bondage, free from sin, free from death. Oh, pastor, don't you ever struggle with any? Yeah, but I have a way of escape. Yeah, I have hope. What do you have? Hopelessness? Fear? Now, God offers you hope. God offers you freedom. Why? No other reason than that He loves you because He created you. He created you and gave you life. So, in Psalm 22, He's the good shepherd. In Psalm 23, because Israel didn't want Him, we Gentiles love Psalm He's the great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You see, I, I used to be in barren desert land. And, 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 and I, I, used, I used to be thirsty and, and, and I, I used to be troubled in my spirit. But, but now he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He leads me into lush vegetation where the, where the trees of the field rejoice and clap their hands and sing praise unto God. He's my shepherd because He's the great shepherd. He's the rock of all ages. He's almighty God. He's everlasting Father. He's Prince of Peace. He is the everlasting to everlasting. He sees the end from the beginning. Beside Him there is none other. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's the great shepherd. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. 
Shadow is a reflection of sunlight behind. See, David looked and he saw in the valley of the shadow. When he was in the valley, there were two mountain ranges on either side. Hallelujah. In Psalm, in Psalm 22, he saw suffering and brokenness. He was on the mountain of suffering. He got into the valley of the shadow of death, but he said, he won't leave me here. He won't leave me here. He won't leave me unattended. My God shall supply all my needs. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, somebody. <laughs> oh, even if I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, it just means I'm going through. I'm going through because I'm headed to somewhere. I, I'm, I'm headed to a place. I, I'm, I'm going to a place, a city. I'm, I'm seeking something that, is, that has eternal value because everything I've touched, when I touch it, it fades away. It vanishes. It's temporary. Everything in this life, everyone around me, relationships have come and gone. Things that I thought would bring me happiness and bring me fulfillment and bring me pleasure have only been tarnished with the using. And now I have nothing. And I hear the words of Jesus say, Ah, don't lay up for yourselves treasure where the moth can eat it and rust corrode it and thieves can eat it. But lay up for yourself heaven. Lay up for yourself. Hear the words of Jesus. If, if you want to keep your life, you have to lose it. Do you hear Jesus' words? You must deny yourself. Learning because your sin nature by its very birth into sin is selfish. It wants what it wants. It wants its own way. It, as a matter of fact, it'll get demanding. We, we get into marital relationships. We get into parental relationships. We get into co-worker relationships. And we want what we want when we want it, bless God. And if we don't get it, we're going to throw a little temper tantrum till we do. Right? Go ahead, take all you need. Right? We do that. You must deny. This. Here's the secret. Here's the secret. It was a mystery hidden from us before, but God's letting the secret out. If you want to keep your life, you must give it away. That's the message of the resurrection. Jesus was the prime example. He gave everything so that you and I who were deprived and had nothing could become everything that He is. You can now become all that He is. There's only one reason that you wouldn't receive it. You just don't want it. Already. But not yet. Psalm 24. Not only is the good shepherd and the great shepherd, oh my God. See, I'm thankful for the cross. I'm thankful for the blood of the cross. And the last two Sundays we've been talking about the mystery of the red heifer sacrifice because God always He will never put on you more than you're able to bear. But with every trial, with every test, they're sent to mature you, to teach you how to serve you. Because when you learn to give your life away, you get mature. But if you try to keep it, you'll lose it. Psalm 24, he's the chief shepherd. He's on another mountain now. He's high and lifted up. Hallelujah. We've come to the cross. 
We've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And now we're on another mountain. We're on another plain. He's the chief shepherd. He's the one high and lifted up. Oh my God, I got to read this to you because this is good. You can't miss this. He's the chief shepherd. He said, Hallelujah. Come here, come here, come here. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw lying on the open hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll, a book written within and on the back, closed and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel announcing in a loud voice, Worthy, who is worthy to open the scroll? And who is entitled and deserves and is morally fit to break its seals? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth in the realm of the dead was able to open the scroll or to take a single look at its contents. And I wept audibly and bitterly because no one was found fit to open the scroll or inspect it. Then one of the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin said to me, Stop weeping! Stop weeping! <laughs> Why am I laughing? Oh, God's going to dry every tear you've ever shed. Every tear you've ever shed. Every prayer you've ever prayed. Hallelujah. God is saying through the resurrection message, um, ha, 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 stop weeping. I'm going to dry. I'm going to wipe every tear from their eye. There's not going to be any mourning. Stop weeping. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root source of David, has won and overcome and conquered. He can open the scroll and break the seven seals. Hallelujah be to God. He is found worthy. He's the one fit. And between the throne and the four living creatures, among the elders in the heavenly Sanhedrin, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, the sevenfold Holy Spirit, who have been sent on duty far and wide into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin prostrated themselves before the Lamb. Each was holding a harp, a lute, or a guitar, and they had golden bowls full of incense, fragrant spices and gums for burning, which are the prayers of God's people, the saints. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, this is getting too good. This is getting too good. See, this... Uh, ha. The, the, the Psalm 24, when he starts talking about the chief shepherd, oh, this is the mystery of the chief shepherd. I want to tell you, this one is yet to be revealed. This one is yet to be, yet to come to pass. Because when it comes to pass, it'll come to pass in the rapture of the church being taken out of the... Listen, and verse 9. And now they sing a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to break the seals that are on it, for you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased men unto God from every tribe, from every language, and every people, and every nation. And you have made them a kingdom, a royal race, and priests to our God. Hallelujah. And they shall reign as kings over the earth. Well, boy, y'all got excited about that. I was just talking about you. I'm talking about believers. Oh God. Oh God. Are you telling me that we can come on a resurrection Sunday morning and sit here on a church pew and look like a stink? at one of the pyramids in Egypt, singing the hymn, I shall not be moved. When God, through Jesus Christ, shed blood, has now made you worthy and has affixed on you the symbol of king and priest and said, what I'm preparing you for, church, is to be able to rule and reign at my coming My concern is 
that has the church now arrived at a place to where we're so ease, at ease in Zion? We've heard it all, seen it all. There's so much skepticism and cynicism in the body of Christ nowadays. We've done it all, bought the T-shirt. That is, the church come to the place that we're saying already, but not yet. When God has called you to rule and reign as kings and priests unto God. Kings and priests. What does that mean? He has set upon you the seal of authority. What does that mean? That every demon in hell has to flee when you speak his name. You're a priest. You're kings and priests. He set you up as a high priest and he's placed his signet ring on you. He's placed his seal of approval and authority upon you. And he said, you'll be able to tread upon serpents and scorpions. You'll be able to take on all the power of hell and none of it will be able to stop you or hurt you. Hallelujah. Oh, I know preaching like this ain't popular. You're not going to get people up running the aisles. We're going to kind of sit there and look. You mean I'm that? My God, if I took on the devil, I, it, well, what if he comes back and launches an all-out assault? What you do is stand up in the authority of the Word of the living God, square your shoulders and look Him straight in the eye, and you make a declaration, I am who God says I am. I will be who God says I will be. I am a king. I am a priest in the earth. And I've been called to set you to flight. What does that mean? You won't steal my health. You won't steal my marriage. You won't take away. You've robbed from me your last day. You've took away from me. You've stole from me your last day. You've deceived me your last day. As for me and my house, I wish I had some Joshua's in the house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah be to God. Hallelujah be to God. Hallelujah be to God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. He's the chief shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. God's about to unfold the mystery. God's on the verge of unfolding the mystery of the chief shepherd. He's given you and I a foretaste of it. And he said, you can live in it now. You ought to be living in it. You ought to be operating in it. Why? Because learning how to serve is rehearsal for heaven. Learning how to serve is rehearsal for heaven. Right? It's learning how to serve the chief shepherd. Because what he's going to ask you to do when he comes back is defeat the forces of hell. You're going to be part of his army. Hallelujah. We're going to take the whole thing on in Armageddon. Woo! He's going to be on a white horse. He's going to have on a white robe. He's going to have a little sash across it. You've seen them beauty pageants? You've never seen one glowing with the glory of God like you're going to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! I'm not talking about the crucified Jesus now. I'm talking about the chief shepherd. I'm talking about the one who has already sat down on the throne and the Father's given him permission to get up off the throne and said, Son, go get your bride. Go get your bride. Hallelujah. Go get her. And everybody like David that died in the promise up to present, looking for the promise to be fulfilled, when that trumpet sounds, oh, dear God, you talk about a blast. Anybody see the Ten Commandments last night? Did you hear Joshua when he blew that blast? When he blew that trumpet, all Israel stood up and took notice. Two million plus people. My God, something's about to happen. When you hear that trumpet sound, you'll say, my God, something's about to happen. Something catastrophic. Something supernatural. Something the human family's never experienced before. But my God, when it happens, the Scripture says the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. The dead in Christ. 
And if you've got some dead in Christ, I hope we don't have any dead in Christ sitting on the pew this morning. Hello? Don't be dead in Christ in here. The dead in Christ, the loved ones that we've sent on before us. See, that's why they call it a coffin. You know what you put in a box? Treasure. Does it work? Works for me. When my cousin Sherry watched her daughter after a family fishing trip try to cross the road when she was across the street walking the dog and her little 10-year-old girl was struck by an automobile and killed with her watching it. And I stood at that graveside in Edgefield, South Carolina and watched them lower that little treasure in that earthen box, that 10-year-old little girl that was the prized possession of their life, knowing that one day when the resurrection trumpet sounds, that little Laura Jean's coming up out of the ground. She's going to rise and be united with that mom and daddy once again. Make no mistake about it. The dead in Christ will rise. Ah, does it work for me? Oh, it gets personal. It was personal then. That's my cousin's baby. It's personal. When we stood in the hospital room, 2001, and sang Madeline's brother into the presence of Jesus. Hymns were being sung. Worship and praise. See, we were Psalm 22 and 23 in it. And when he took his last breath and was ushered into the presence of Jesus, we said, this isn't goodbye. This isn't farewell. We'll see you when the trumpet sounds. We'll see you when the trumpet... Is anybody getting a hold of this? The resurrection makes it personal. The resurrection personalizes it for you and me. Without the resurrection, there is no hope. You're miserable in this life. The resurrection makes it real. The resurrection makes it eternal. The resurrection makes it victorious. Oh, don't be one of those who say, I'm going to defer hope. I'm going to delay it. Already, but not yet. Already. See, it is finished. It is finished. Made everything ready. Made everything now. Made everything possible. Possible now. Hallelujah. Anybody want to rule and reign with the chief shepherd today? You ready? You ready? You ready? If there's anybody here this morning. I know this is kind of an unusual Easter message, but I hope you got it. I hope you get what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. And, and, and I hope that you really seriously consider what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. Don't be all ready, but not yet. Because eternal life is staring you right in the face. It's right here. Available. He, Jesus, makes it all possible. Makes it all possible. I am the resurrection, the life. The only way you get to the Father is through me. I am the door. I am the door. You can open it. Grace and love and mercy let you gain access to me. Put you in the position of becoming a king, a priest, and a ruling reign, awaiting the arrival of the chief shepherd. I'm kind of a, pardon me for this, I'm an, I'm an eyes wide open. A lot of churches you may have gone into, and 
pastor will say, every head bowed and every eye closed. But our Jesus, look at the mob that was demanding and calling for his death looked with eyes wide open said father forgive them so this morning with eyes wide open looking into the face of Jesus who is the author of If you've been saying already but not yet, you're ready to say already. I want that personal relationship. That's you. I want a personal relationship. I need a personal relationship. I've strayed from following that right? I need to get back in perfect I need to be in relationship. Is there anybody here this morning? I just want to give you the opportunity on this resurrection. Yes, I see that. Well, they'll see me. Folks will see me. Yes, they will, and so will God. So will God. And guess where else he'll see me? He'll stand before him. Give an account for everything. And if it's all covered under the blood, you'll hear, the, hear those infamous words, well done, good and faithful. You certainly don't want to hear, depart from me. You want him to know. Anybody else? Here? My prayer is that if he's not Lord of your life, you'll know. If he's not your good shepherd, your great shepherd, your chief shepherd, you'll make him personalize. Father, I hear your word clearly. I hear the Holy Spirit. I pray that if there are any in this house this morning that already but not yet, they would say yes to you sooner than later. I pray for the one that raised their hand. They desire a personal relationship. I pray you will come into her heart. Pray that you will find a place there that only you can fill, that only you can satisfy the hunger and the longing. I declare that all confusion will be gone. The burden of trying to live this life alone in hopelessness and despair is lifted, and that Christ Jesus has cleared the path and made the way plain. And from this day forth, a new life in Jesus Christ is yours. Pursue it. Follow him. No devil in hell can stop you. No devil in hell can stop you. I would challenge the body this morning that the Holy Spirit is saying to us, do not find yourself in a place of already. Make sure that you are pressing toward the prize of the mark of the high call in Jesus Christ your Lord. He has called you to operate in authority. Why? For no other reason than the mission statement of Jesus. He's come that you might have life and that more abundantly. He has come that you might set the captive free. Hallelujah. If he set you free, he set you free to free someone else. If he's given you authority, he gave you authority to break the power of sin over someone. 
You have that authority. Hallelujah. No devil in hell can stop you. I don't care what kind of attack the enemy has launched against you, against you, your spouse, your children, your home. It will not stand. I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying. I don't care if they get mean as a I don't care if they walk in such rebellion. The more they resist, I had a wise mentor one time that said, resistance brings it on. The harder they resist, the more eternal. The more the power of God. Already, but not yet, I want to tell you, in a nanosecond, that but not yet can be turned into what the Apostle Paul said when he was on the road to Damascus and a great light shone on his path and knocked him off his donkey. And when he got up, he asked two questions. Who are you, Lord, and what do you want me to do? That already but not yet can be turned around in a heartbeat. Are you hearing me? Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? Oh, how many times as a preacher has I, have I faced it when I didn't see somebody in the house of God for months upon months, even years, and all of a sudden they turned back up and said, I've got a life-threatening disease. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? I've lost everything. I've lost my wealth. I've lost my position. I've lost my home. I've lost my children. I've lost it all. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want? Is anybody hearing me this morning? Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, that sounds kind of condemning. The only way you can get free of condemnation is what Romans 8 said. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So I'm not apologizing for the condemnation. It's your choice. Correct? If you have condemnation, it's your choice. Not the Father. He sent Jesus to free. Amen? How many is free in Jesus? Don't you love freedom? I love freedom. I love, if you love freedom, you ought to at least smile about it. I'm, I mean, my Lord. I mean, I, I go, how many loves freedom? Come on. You love it. You guys got what? I don't know that there's another church in America that just experienced what we've experienced. I really don't. But it's, I'll try to spiritualize that for you. You have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hey, I'll call it a simulation. And boy, if it's that good, I want to go to heaven, don't you? Hallelujah! Lift your hand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord be merciful unto you. And flow into your life out of His great love. May the resurrection life of Jesus Christ continue to manifest itself to you on a daily basis that in this life you will live and walk in the authority of the kings and priests to which the chief shepherd has ordained you to walk and live in that you might go forth in this life as lights and salt in the earth unto the validity of the risen power of the resurrected Christ setting the captive free and declaring the favor of the Lord upon every life that you touch. May your life be favored. I understand favor is not fair, but I thank the Lord that He has favored us because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary and is now seated as your advocate in heaven at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession on your behalf. For the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Give him a hand clap of praise in the house. Here's a verse of scripture. Hallelujah! 
Well, bless his name. <laughs> Y'all are feeling better about it now, aren't you? As we leave, let's declare Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock and my redeemer. I love you. Happy Easter. Amen.